it. So now I'm gonna show you what we have here. So when I hit the play button, we are gonna have the player. So here is the player. Don't worry about all of these warnings. We will talk about this. So yeah, not important. You have the player, you have his laser. As you can see, you see the little red thing pointing here where I'm pointing on the mouse. So that's the laser we can shoot. Notice this. So we can shoot and you can see the lightning coming out of the player when he shoots. You can see the bullets. You can see the muzzle on his gun. I also want to show you that if we go here towards this robot, let me just find him, robot enemies, here he is. Notice the robot is patrolling here. So notice he is going, he's patrolling, he can go here, he can rotate. Now he's going to go towards this door, the door is going to open for the robot. We have the door sound, but we cannot hear it because of me talking and whatnot. And uh, yeah. You see this little circle here, this sphere collider, the green little thing? This is where the robot is going to detect when we come near him. Same as with this dude right here. Same as this robot or this spider here. Notice when we come inside of this circle, this green thing here, he is going to search for us or come towards us. So let's test it out. When we come near him, notice... He's going to get active and now he is following us. If I go back, if I go away from him, he is going to go back. Notice he's going back and going inside of his position. Again, if I come here, he is activated and coming towards me. And when he comes near us, he's going to explode. And when we go here, this is the area of the flying robot. He's going to come and search for us. Here he is and he is going to start shooting at us any moment now. So when he comes near us, he will start shooting. So let us just wait for it. Come on, shoot. What is going on with the dude? Yeah, finally he started shooting. Anyways, we will see that in the course how we can do it. I'm going to shoot at him. You see the effects that, well, the particle effects when the bullets hit him. So they emit some kind of uh, electric spark, so to say. Same way with this one. So notice now when I shoot him, notice they emit electric sparks. When he dies, we see that effect the explosion effect which we are going to create with particle effects and whatnot and if i come here notice when he comes near us notice now he's going to explode on his own damaging us so if i select the player in the health script let me just find it yeah here it is we have 79 health but we began health with 100 if i go here notice the animation of the door if i go back from the door so the door closes back. This is also one thing that we're going to learn. Notice now, again, door opens and we can go to here or through this little room, go back here and now we can go where the robot is and the robot, as soon as he sees us, he's going to start shooting. And voila, he saw us and now he's going to start shooting. You see these rockets, crazy rockets. Let's just kill the robot. Yeah. And finally, the robot is also dead. Let me see the health. It's 64. So yeah, this is the game that we are going to create. I know, I know you are highly impressed. It's an awesome game. It's crazy game. And now we cannot go through here because I did not program that. But hey, you will learn how you can program it on your own. So if you want to add some extra features, be my guest, but this is the game. So you saw the robot, he started shooting at us. You saw those spider robots, they are coming towards us, then they explode. The flying robot also, he circles around us, he can find he can find us anywhere in his or on the map when we enter this area. If I select the flying buzzer, you see this area? So this right here, when we enter this area, this is the collider that I've specified. So when we touch that collider, he will get activated and he will start searching for us. Overall, this is the project. So this is what we're going to create. Maybe down the line, I will add some more features such as the rain effect, sound effects, more sound effects that is because we have sound effects here. If I just pump up the volume a little bit because I lowered it, notice now we're going to hear the shooting. We have sound effects. Notice the robot. He's going to start searching for us and whatnot. And now he's going to go back. Also, when he explodes and this what you just heard was actually the opening of the door. And when he explodes, we also hear sound effects. So we have sound effects in our game. But as I said, we will, well, down the line, I will probably add more 
because the whole project has rain effect, rain falling down, it has the rain sound, so on and so forth. Just download Unity 4.6.9, download the project and see the whole project and which effects does the project have. So I'm thinking about down the line, I will add all of those effects. I'm not promising it, but hey, this is what you get for now, which is pretty awesome. So let's get into it. I'm going to go here into my Unity, which is a new project. And this one is created or I opened this in another Unity project. So I'm going to close it because I don't need it anymore. And voila, this is a new Unity project. We know already how to create one. So it's under new project here. You're going to click here, new project. So yeah, new project. When you open Unity, click here, new, give it a name, give it a path. It's a 3D project. So click here, it's a 3D and click create project and you are done. Here I have all of the assets that I already mentioned that you can download. Link is in the description below. So link is in the description below. Again, I repeat because, well, I say this so many times and people still don't know how to get the assets. Anyways, get the assets from the link and what you're going to import is everything here. So select everything except for the packages. So this packages folder, we are not going to import at the moment. So select all of this here, drag and drop it here in unity and wait for unity to finish while well, importing all of this. As you can see, we have a lot of textures. We have a lot of models. We have a lot of effects that we need to import. So just wait a little bit, be patient. Don't go crazy on your computer. Don't go into rage mode. Just wait a little bit. This is normal, depending on how large your project is, it will take a little bit of time for Unity to import all of that. So, hey, while we are waiting for it, I can tell you that you can go on awesometudes.com and uh, yeah, get the course right here, this one. Get it, just get it and don't wait. So don't wait to get the course and yeah, that's that. Let us go back to Unity and wait for it to actually import everything. And I'm thinking about should I actually stop the video or no, I'm not going to stop it. I don't care. I'm too lazy to re-edit all of that. So yeah, finally it has stopped. I'm going to clear everything here in the console. Voila, this is what we have here. Now again, since I'm pretty lazy, we're also going to import the level and everything that you just saw as a prefab. And that is located here into the packages folder. So we have a lot of packages here. I will tell you which one we are going to import. But before that, I'm going to right click here, create a new folder, which I'm going to call scenes. Inside of this folder, I'm going to save a, this scene that we're currently in. So go under file, save scene or simply command S or control S on Windows. So S like this save it into the scenes folder. So here is my scenes folder. This is the gameplay scene. Gameplay, I'm going to hit enter and voila, we are good to go. So now what we need to do is right click, import package. It's going to be a custom one. And the package is located, well, inside of the assets. So I'm going to go here, projects, angry bots, assets. And it's inside of the packages. Again, in side of the packages. So right here, I'm repeating this so many times because probably there will be somebody who's like, oh, I cannot find it where it is. You said it's here. It's on packages. So here, packages, okay? And when you are there, we want to import these environments. So dynamic, semi-static, and static. So import environment dynamic. So all of this, click import. It's going to import. We're going to see now the prefabs folder. So right here, here it is, prefabs folder, and it's under this for exporting. Just ignore it. We will rename it in a second. I'm going to right click again, import package, custom one. Now we import it dynamic. So now import semi static, double click on it, wait for unity to open this window for you and simply click import. Don't do anything here. So don't uncheck anything, leave it as it is. Just click import. It will import it again. It will be located here in this folder for exporting. Let me just wait for it and voila, here it is. So these dynamic or environments, I'm going to right click again and import package custom one. So now we need to import this static, click on it and import it, click import, wait for unity to import it and we will be good to go. And there is one more package, I believe. 
Yes, I think it's one more package that we are gonna import before we start building up things. In this video, we are actually simply gonna prepare the level, talk about the lightning, skyboxes, even though we did that before, but hey, we're gonna repeat everything and see some new features, see some new skybox, use lightning to create mood and blah, blah, blah. So again, this is done for environment. So now we can click this for exporting folder and I'm gonna rename it. So I am gonna rename it, reveal in finder. How can I rename it actually? Yeah, just simply hit enter on it. And I'm gonna call this one environments. Yeah, this one is for environments and I'm gonna right click again, import another package, which is gonna be a custom one. And this time we're gonna import this mood boxes. That will be for this video for importing things. So don't import anything else here. So all of three environments, dynamic, static, let me just go back here. Why is it putting like this? So dynamic, semi-static, static, and mood boxes. So click on mood boxes, it is gonna import. So click here, import, and voila, this is located here under FX or effects. So now what we need to do is simply before we drag and drop all of these, we need to go under window in lightning and here we have the settings for the lights and here I'm simply gonna put the lightning here before we do anything click or uncheck this auto generate so uncheck it what this here is if I hover over it, it's gonna say automatically generates a lightning data in the scene when any changes are made to the lightning system what this means is that this is the lightning, this right here. Now we don't see his effects because we don't have any files or any models inside of the scene for the lightning to be cast on. But essentially, if we move some game objects and well now the lightning has also moved, the lighting will affect that game object in a different way because it's now moved in a different position. When this auto generate is checked like this, Unity will recalculate where that light is and it will take a little bit of time, it will slow down your computer, it will slow down your game or Unity editor while you are creating the game. So we don't want that. And for that, we're simply gonna click this auto-generate or uncheck this checkbox. So make sure this checkbox is unchecked because then your computer will be much faster. Unity will not recalculate things unnecessarily. So again, you're gonna go under window of lightning and then click on settings. And this is for the lightning. Now, going back here inside of our hierarchy, I'm gonna drag and drop the environment static. Here it is, voila, this is our environment, yay, woo. Yeah, this is the environment, thank you, thank you. And we are gonna drag the semi-static one. We are also gonna drag the dynamic one. So simply drag and drop everything there. And we are also gonna go back into the prefabs FX and drag these mood boxes. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, if I go here inside of the scene, let me just take a look at where the camera is. I'm gonna take the camera like this. Select the camera here and I'm gonna, well, select it in the hierarchy. Hold Command, Shift and press F just so that the camera is now pointing to this view right here. And this works like you go into the scene, you see some view, so something like this, you put the view where you wanna see it, select the camera in the hierarchy, Command, Shift, F, and voila, camera will reposition itself in that place so that you can see exactly what you saw into the scene view. And you can see that in the game view now. So now, what we wanna do is play with the lighting a little bit. So I already talked about directional lights, what are lightnings and whatnot. If we turn them off, so we will see the effect, but not that much because of the, let me just put this, 50. Not that much because of the shaders we are using on these elements. So what I'm gonna do is select, for example, this rock here, and I'm gonna go here and for his shader, you see the shader is set to angry bots, reflective background, arbitrary geometry. I'm gonna put it back at the standard. So do you see the effect now when we put it back at standard? Let me just go back and try it. Standard specular setup, or probably go, let's see under the unlit texture. Yeah, this one is great also. So unlit texture for the rocks. For this here, the dark thing here, so click on it. Just make sure that you click on it and let me just go back. 
click it and it is selected here inside of the hierarchy just to be sure well uncheck it here check the checkbox here to make it not active and you will see that you have clicked the right well environment and I'm gonna change the shader for this one back to standard so now you see well it is visible now let me just check standard specular setup hmm well it can do it can do and I'm gonna go here also this one the dark one I'm gonna set it standard for all of these others I'm probably not gonna touch them because I'm too tired because now let me go here again and select one of these just so that I can set them at standard so that they will be affected by our lightning and these rocks unlit texture if I set them on standard okay, I can set them on standard and change the color here and that will make the color well a little bit texture-ish select all of these also here I'm gonna set them to standard I'm setting them to standard shader because I want to show you the effects of lightning even though we saw them but hey we want to see them again okay standard this one also the doors what did I select oh this is the mood box that I selected this is the exterior door set it to standard again go here this is just selecting things, so you just need to select things. Don't be confused and be like, Whoa, what is going on? I'm so confused. There is no need to be confused because, again, I'm just selecting things here and changing changing their shaders. So this right here, this the texture that is representing their texture, changing it to standard, maybe standard specular setup. Yeah, standard can do. Yeah, standard can do. So now if I go here inside of the game, Come on, open the game. And now we can see the effect of the directional lightning on our scene. So if I turn off directional lights, do you see that? So do you see the effect of the directional lightning inside of our scene? Before we start playing with directional lights and see the effects, as you can see, we simply rotate it and, well, yeah, we have different effects and blah, blah, blah. We are going to add a skybox to our scene. As you can see, this is the default skybox. And in order to add a new skybox, we need to go into Lightning. So the Lightning tab, that one that we created or opened under Window, Lightning and Settings. This is the Lightning tab. So for the skybox material, I'm going to click here on this little circle. And for the skybox material, I am going to search for Empty Horizon. So Horizon here it is empty horizon skybox voila this one right here and also one thing to note is that we can also have this as you can see the environment lightning can also be casted from a skybox so if i go here let me just turn off the directional lights let me go and check it if it will actually work yes it can it can work you see here intensity multiplier you see this in the previous tutorials i tried to show you this but the scene was set up in that way that we could not see the effect. But you see this environment lightning here. Currently, the source is set to the skybox. That means that we can use this intensity multiplier to cast lights from the skybox directly. We don't need the directional light. because You see, we turned off directional light. If I turn it back on, we have lights from the directional light. But, well, I'm going to show you that we can also have lights from the horizon or from the skybox. Now, just keep in mind that if you are working in your game, you're adding lights and you turn them off and you still see lights, this is because the lightning here environment is set to skybox and it is casting those lights. In order to change that, we can set here the source to be the color instead of the skybox, of course. And for the color, we can simply set it to be dark because, well, we don't want to cast lights from, well, don't want to cast lights from skyboxes. I'm going to use the directional light. So set the source to color and set the color to be dark because I don't want any lights from the environment. I want lights from the directional light as we just see here. And for the directional light, as I talked about it, this directional light, let me just find it in the scene where it is. Directional light, where are you? Dude, where you are? Okay, here he is. Here he is. Directional lights, they're called directional because 
you need to point the light in a certain direction. If I change his position, notice I'm changing the X position of the light. His X position now is at 100, Y position 100, Z position 100. As you can see here, I'm playing that in the inspector, setting the position back 0, 0, 0. Nothing is changing, as you can see inside of the scene view. So when I say nothing is changing, nothing is changing regarding lights. Directional lights, you need to point them at a certain position. So need to point them with rotation in order for them to cast lights. If, however, I change the rotation at 0, 0, 0, immediately we see that the lightning has changed. And this right here, this light that you see, so this one right here is from effect. This is the point light. As you can see, I can click on it. This is the point light, which also has, well, lightning effect. So if I uncheck it, so if I uncheck it, you see, does not have the point light. And I talked about point lights also in some of the previous tutorials. I think it was inside of that robot shooter. And we will talk about point lights in this one also. So the directional light, I am going to position it at 45 or rotate it 45, 65. And well, for the Z axis, it can be four. And this is it. And for the color, well, for the color, I'm gonna go here and the hex color is gonna be 848-848-57-DFF. This is the hex color for which or which we are gonna use for the lightning. For the intensity, I can use 1.5. Now, depending on the intensity, if you pump it up, it will be like this. If you put it down, it will be like this. So the intensity is gonna, well, determine how hard or, well, the intensity of lightning, just so to say. This real-time mixed and baked mode, I talked about it. Baked is when you want to bake lights inside of your textures. For example, this point light here, this one, we want it to be baked. So this type point light, it is set to mixed here, but we want it to be baked. Why? Well, because, well, this right here, it will, well, affect mobile performance because lightning operations, lightning operations in Unity are pretty expensive, especially on mobile. So the, the lights that you just want to be like these here. So this light here is going to stay. It's not going to cast shadows on our player. We don't need it. So we can set it to be baked. So actually not here, but under mode, we can set it to be baked. And then it will be built in, put inside of the texture and voila, then we will not have any performance issues. So when you click on it to be baked here, you will need to go under lightning and then you will probably go here under bake reflection probes and you're going to click on generate lightning and then you are good to go. You will wait for Unity to bake all of that. That's an operation that lasts. You will see here at the bottom right corner how that goes, blah, blah, blah. I'm still thinking about should I create a separate tutorials only for lightning, but for now, just take the information I'm giving you. But going back here to our, well, directional light. Let me just take a look at, should I actually maybe put it like this? I'm just playing with the light to see the effects. It was at 65, so I'm going to put it back at 65, but for the rotation here. Yeah, I can, I can set it at 45. We can change this again if we if there is a need to do so. But anyways, I'm going to end the tutorial now. Again, we talked about lightning. We talked about skyboxes, the environment lightning we get from those skyboxes. And also notice this skybox. It's pretty awesome. We see some effects here from all of these lights. As you can see, these point lights, they are actually these reflections that you see here. The same as here. So this right here is not the actual light, this one right here that you see, but it's from the, well, point light. And let me just set this one to standard also so that, well, they can be affected by the directional light that we have. Anyways, we talked about lights. We imported our levels. This is all your preference. You can play with the directional light to see the effects that you want to create. And I am Fa here from awesometudes.com. Go on my website, awesometudes.com. Get Unity 3D course. It's a pretty awesome course. I talked about all of these 
things that I've just mentioned. I talked about lining that course in high depth. You will see what is baked light, what is real time light, what is mixed. You will see also how to create shadows set the quality of the shadows, so on and so forth, how to bake those lights. And you will see what I'm talking about when I say put the lighting inside of the texture to make it, well, easy for performance on mobile devices. So again, awesome go over here, get the course. You have nothing to lose, 30 day money back guarantee. And that is that if you want to download this complete project, along with the assets we are using or I'm using here to create this. Link is in the description below. And that is it for this video. I will catch you in the next video.